I'm backing up my truck, I'm gonna hook it up, loading up my boat with all my gear. I've been working hard all week, trying to make ends meet, spending time wishing I was fishing. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. Gather up your gear and come along. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. This is Terry Wickstrom. Join Karen Collum, Greg Collagio, and me as we take you to some of our favorite fishing spots from Colorado to Minnesota, the Arctic Circle to Central America and beyond. As we revisit episodes of Mountain States Fishing and Angling Adventures Television on the best of fishing with Terry Wickstrom. Out here today, we're going to go ice fishing on Glendo Reservoir in Wyoming. Uh, Glendo is an irrigation reservoir that's about 100 miles north of Cheyenne, just off of um, Interstate I-25, well known for its walleye fishing. I first got introduced to Glendo Reservoir fishing walleye tournaments, in fact. I've gathered with me today a group of some of the better walleye fishermen in the area. We've got uh, tournament fishermen, guides, tackle manufacturers. We're going to try to show you a little bit about what it's like to ice fish in some of these Wyoming reservoirs for walleyes and teach you a little bit about how to do it and maybe then you can come up and enjoy some of this too. So guys, let's get out there and get some fish. What do you think, okay? Right. Let's go do it. I'll tell you what, Jake, I really appreciate you having me up here. I'm glad you could come up. I haven't seen you since the tournaments. Yeah, it's been a while. This is Jake Trujillo. He's taking me out walleye fishing today at Glendo. I was doing a sports show, and he called and said, you got to get up here. We're catching limits of fish. So I, I was at the sports show. I couldn't go, so I came up. I called him a couple days ago. He said, they quit biting. We came out today, and that sure hasn't been the case, has it? We found him again. Yeah. We've got maybe 20 fish already. About 20. Just, just jigging these spoons. I'll yeah, tell you what, I appreciate you like this. staying at your place, and uh, I'm looking forward to going back in and having some chili and uh, coming back out and just having a great day. Having a great day, huh? Yep. Okay. I got one messing around. Yeah. Oh, there we go. You got one? I think I've got All right. him. Yeah, I've got him. Okay, good. You need help, you get him. It's coming up. Let's see if I can get him. Hey, oh. Here, hand him over here. Let's show him. This is typical of what we've been catching here. These aren't huge, but nice, fat, eaten size walleyes. I tell you what, we're going to go home with a bunch of fillets today. Um, Curtis just nailed one over there. Oh, we got another one over there. Oops, oh, it's a perch. perch. <laughs> yeah. But um, these are, you know, 15, 16 inch walleyes, but they're yeah. fat and plump, and we're catching them. What do you got, 20, 25 of them? We got a couple dozen. We've been out less than an hour. We got, we must have over 20 fish already. This is great. Let me uh, show them that spoon here. Okay. Doing. Get this one over there. A couple different lures we're using. This is called a, uh, what do you guys, what do you call this? A PK spoon? PK spoon. And uh, you make this? Grady. And this is Pat O'Grady, is, uh, manufactures this locally. And a little later on, I'll have him explain everything about, he's got a clicker system on it and how he came up with the design, but it's a shad shaped flutter type spoon. And what a wonderful lure. Now I've been it using, really works. I've been using a flea fly spoon that you've seen me write about in the magazine articles. And it's been working, but the PK spoon really seems to be outperforming it today. Guys are really catching fish on it. I've been using this type of a spoon that I use in open water. You've seen me write some articles in magazines on. We'll give close-ups of these spoons later. 
But boy, it's been just tremendous fishing. It has. That's it been has wonderful. Been. I got to thank you again for bringing me up here, Jake. This has been terrific. I want to get back down and catch some more fish. Nice with these spoons to get down to the bottom so quick. Mm -hmm. When you're in that fast bite, you're just anxious to get down there. If you got to work a jig down there, you get anxious. But just being able to get these down like this and yeah, and they're down so quick. Let's see if we can get some more. You know, we got how many guys we got out here? Oh, there's uh six of us. Six guys, and uh, we've caught 20 some fish already. And we haven't been out an hour yet. It hasn't and been. And everybody's been. caught fish. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, you know, two or three. early morning bite. Typically, the bite's been either early in the morning or late in the evening, hasn't it? Yes, it has. It's, uh, it's just been, uh, well, it's been phenomenal. I knew Glenda would be a good ice fishing lake for walleyes, but when you called me, I didn't know it would be phenomenal like this. Yeah, it it's is. been terrific. It has been. And you know, it just, it, you don't need a lot of bait. You don't need a lot of expensive gear. You come out here and drill a hole. If you got, yeah. you know, it's nice with the sonar. If you can find your depth and stuff, and then just mm -hmm. start jigging those spoons. And there we go. There, there you go. go. Got one on, huh? Yeah, it feels pretty good. Another nice one. Not a 10 pounder, but a nice fish. Keep coming up. Oh, that's a fat one. Look at that. Nice fat. That's about a 17 inch, 18 inch walleye. That's a pretty good size walleye. That's there. a, well, the they're belly's nice. on them, huh? Oh, they're, they're nice and healthy. They're eating good, I'll tell you what. They're eating a lot of shad. Yeah, they're, uh, well, that's why these spoons work so good, because they're eating yeah. on those shad. And this time, when the water gets cold like this, um, you've got a fish down by your spoon. I can see it on the electronics. Okay. Um, when they're eating these uh, shad like that, these spoons are so effective. When the walleyes are eating shad, those spoons fluttering down become just an effective way to fish for them. That's a nice big fat walleye. It is. Okay, it's we're going to have some nice fillets today. Yeah, we? it's decent fish. You know, when the bite comes in spurts, um, typically, you'll catch a bunch of fish and stops, and you'll catch a bunch of fish you might catch one off and on, but it comes hot and heavy, and then it slows down, and it comes hot and heavy. Mm -hmm. Well, though it's hot and heavy, I'm going to get back down and try to catch another one. Okay. All right. Well, I tell you what, I don't know how many we've caught already. How many fish have we caught already? I don't know, 25, 30? Oh, I don't know, it's a lot. They're all nice eating-sized walleyes. And, uh, this is another one of our guests today. We have a group of guys out here today, and this is uh, Dennis Wager, and he came up with um, Curtis. I'm sorry you had to come up with Curtis. <laughs> are you related to Curtis? Yes, I am, brother-in-law. Oh, well, I guess then you can't pick your relatives. No. Curtis is actually a pretty good guy. But um, do you do a lot of ice fishing, Dennis? Are you just into it now, or have you done quite a bit? Well, I've, I've ice fished for about 15 years, but I'm kind of a newcomer to the walleye fishing. What did you fish for before? Trout mostly. Well, you know, that's t typical where we live in Colorado and stuff like that, but that's a great ice fishing. I mean, it's wonderful. And, you know, ice fishing is just so, just, you know, there's no reason to quit fishing in the winter. No, it's just, absolutely it's not. It's just wonderful. And I've got to warm my hands up and get back down the hole here. Why don't you see if you can get us a fish? I mean, they're, they're biting again. It doesn't take long between uh -huh. fish, does it? No, it doesn't. It's been a hot bite this morning. Boy, it's been nice. It's been fun. What we're using here is a Vexilar fish finder, and it's a flasher. And this thick red band down here is the bottom. And it's on a double scale right now, times two. So it says it says almost 16, so we're about 32 feet deep. And you see that line going up and down there? Uh-huh. That's my lure. Is that your lure there? Move your No, that see that right there? That's a fish right there. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna go up to that fish and see if we can catch him. But that one that goes up and down, when I jig my lure up and down, we can actually see it. Now that fish swam away. But the nice thing about this is we can be down, I'll get down back closer to the bottom, like we're fishing these walleyes. And I can aggressively jig this until I see a fish, and then I can actually change the presentation to tease them and find out what's going on and stuff with them. So it's, uh, it makes fishing a lot more fun, too, because you're jigging, you actually see the fish come in on the screen before he hits. Oh, my spoon, uh, spoon tangled up. That is a nice unit. There's your jig right there, see it? Oh, yeah. See your spoon up there? The shoe here? Yeah, I'm coming up, mine tangled up, and it wouldn't come off. But, you know, I'll, I'll guarantee that sonar will at least double the amount of fish a guy will catch ice fishing because we're sitting right here now, we're jigging up and down, we know there's no fish here. Yeah. Now, we have to keep fishing for a while to find out if there's fish or we don't have sonar. If we don't see a fish come onto the screen in the next few minutes, what we'll do is we'll actually, we'll just go move out and drill some more holes and try another spot. So you spend a lot less time in non-productive water and you get to see your presentation, you know when you're down on bottom, you know, you see the fish react to it, it makes you a better fisherman. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, let's get some fish here. But these are a great way to go. You know, you can use a regular depth finder too. Uh -huh. And it'll show up as a straight line, you can see it, but the flash is instantaneous because we can see your jig going back and forth. Uh, some of the newer uh, graph models have a flasher set up in them. Are those as right. good as a, as a true flasher? Not quite, but they're pretty good. And you can fish, if you own a regular graph, type off your boat. There's nothing wrong with setting it up to ice fish with. I mean, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy just for ice fishing yeah. and it'll be more than adequate. But any use of sonar will double or triple the number of fish you get. I'm right here and you can see your, your, your spoon going up and down. Mm -hmm. And if there's a, if, and if you see a fish there, you'll be able to know right away. Now we're, we're jigging up and down, we're not seeing any fish, so we might as well pick up and we'll move out a little deeper. So I think we ought to do that. Let's go out the Sounds other spot good. where they, they're catching some fish out there, so I think we need to move out where they are. All right, let's okay. go, let's go move out. Let's there. do it. Well, one of the guys fishing with me today is Pat O'Grady. Pat, it's a pleasure to meet you this Nice trip. to meet you. And um, Pat's the, the, you designed and invented this lure, is that right? Or? Yes, it's a, it's a shad imitation. We caught some fish up here earlier this fall from the boat, and they were spitting up shad this exact size and color. Uh, a friend of mine, I've made spoons similar to this in the past. A friend of mine told me to make up some for him. I made some up for him and he came up the next week and just absolutely killed the fish on it and uh, since we've been fishing with it up here uh, for about the past month there's probably been between 500 and 1,000 fish caught on it. Well it's a unique, uh, if you can get over here we can see it, you've got some, there's some unique things about this spoon. One of the, of course the flat flutter shape and we'll give you some more close ups later. But also, it's got two hooks on it, which is not typical for spoons. One up at the top, one down lower. Yes. And then you've got a clicker system. Tell us a little bit about the ideas behind that. Well, the clicker system is a couple of beads with a brass bell weight in between them on a little, about two inch, two and a half inch wire. And uh, as you, the technique for fishing, this is a, a ripping style jigging motion. And the, the beads really click and bang, and it seems like it's, uh, really helping the fish to find it. Yeah, it's really good. Well, okay, let's get in there and see. I'm using a little different spoon. Now, you've actually been out fishing me with this spoon. I'm using a flea fly spoon, which is a little different. Same concept as far as dying bait fish, but that's a, a little unique design. Let's see if we can get some going here. I and mean, one of the keys is to keep moving and find the fish. I mean, it's not uncommon to have to drill 40, 50 holes in a day. Sometimes up to 100, you know. I mean, if it takes that to get find fish, you that's what you do. I see the bites turning on a little bit again, so the guys are getting a few, so that's pretty good. Yeah. I think well, it's already been a great day. Yeah, Jake's just caught another one, and I think that what we're going to find here is uh, through the day we're going to have a few slow spots, but we're going to get waves of them coming through. Oh, there's one right there. All right, way to go. Any size, about like the other? Uh, about a 14, oh, 50, double. a double. Double. We, All right. I tell you, what, this is so much fun. All right. God, I just tell you what. And people sit in the house in the wintertime instead of coming out and enjoying something like this. Oh, I know. You know, ice fishing is just a, bigger. a little bit nicer. It's difficult. The guests always get better fish than me. I mean, nice, just nice eating size walleyes. Way to go. Fabulous fish. Hey, uh, PK Spoon? Yes. Glendo Reservoir? Nice weather, good people, and lots of fish. What more could be better than this? This is just tremendous. You guys got to get out and try this. If you're not coming to these Wyoming reservoirs to fish for walleyes, you're really missing out because it's tremendous. So get up and try it. Yeah. Another, another guy with us today is uh, Curtis Fields. Curtis is a really avid walleye angler and a tournament fisherman. In fact, Curtis fishes, uh, he fished the, the amateur side of the PWT last year, and you're going to get this year, and then you'll hope to go pro here soon. And That's correct. Curtis is, uh, we, our paths cross quite a bit. We know a lot of the same guys and good walleye fishermen. And yeah, he actually came up last week and pre-fished this for me. And, <laughs> and uh, I'm sitting back at a sports show and he's coming back. He says, oh, we just got all these walleyes. I'm just going, geez. But it's really, I'm glad you could join me out here today, Curtis. Thank it's, you. It's, uh, uh, we're having a good time. I and mean, we got six, seven guys out here and we're just in fish steady. I don't know how many we've caught already, but boy, it's been fun. It's been, a, it's definitely been a good day, Terry. Anytime you can get out on the ice and, and get away from, the, you know, the city and the hustle and bustle of work and, and catch some walleye, uh, just really makes your day. Oh. Well, you know, one of the keys to it is we catch a few fish, we move, we catch a few fish. Hmm. We're not just setting up in one place. I mean, the key is drilling a lot of holes, looking for the fish and working for them. That's right. We need to come up set on one spot. When we got out here, everybody was set up on kind of one guys and they weren't getting fish and all of a sudden the guys said we're getting them over here we moved and everybody had fish 
then those kind of died. You moved again, and everybody started catching fish again. And yep. if you just sit on these walleyes are moving around, and if you just sit on them, you won't catch them. That's right, Terry. You kind of got to follow the walleye, and you know when the bite slows down, you got to you got to drill some more holes and, and go searching. That's for sure. I'll tell you, this is just a great way to fish. Slow down a little bit. One of us needs to get one here real quick. All right, let's see what we can do. Oh, I think I just missed one. Oh, there, there he is. Sure, there he is. The one I had. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I think you uh, you attracted him in, and uh, and he came over and, and got mine. Oh, nice one. Yeah. Well, you know, they're all they're all they're not huge fish, but just nice eating size fat walleyes. Isn't that great? On the PK that spoon is. again. The PK spoon. PK spoon sure been a way to catch them. Well, you know that's another thing you talked about attracting them in. One thing that happens, there's really two things in catching fish and ice fishing. You have to attract them in and trigger a strike. And that hard, aggressive jigging motion is what attracts them in. But typically, they hit while the lure is falling or while it's paused. That's right, it, and they do. A lot do. of times, you have to, and if the fishing is tough, a lot of times, you have to have real long pauses. Now, you wouldn't think they'd come and bite a piece of metal while it's just sitting there in the water. But they do, either while it's fluttering down or just while it's, after it's sitting there, just kind of slowly moving, they'll kind of key in on it, and that's when the bite usually hits. That's correct. This PK spoon, it, it uh, represents a, a, a shad dying and just right. fluttering to the bottom, and uh, the uh, the action, the sound, that it, and the vibration, I think it really it really does the trick. Well, I tell you what, it's sure been doing the trick today. I'm going to have to switch now. I'm using a, a, a flea fly spoon, which has been a very effective spoon for me, and I have caught some walleyes on it. But you know, there's, that's another thing is you travel around to different lakes and try different areas. There's traditional things and favorite lures that work in almost all places. But a lot of times there seems to be a key presentation for a certain lake that just seems to work. And talking to people and finding out about it will really help you um, sometimes with that. Sometimes it doesn't make any difference and sometimes the techniques you bring with you are better because they're new to that lake. That's right. But if there's something hot and it's really working, you know, do a little homework. Talk to the locals, talk to the bait stores, talk to the guys that are out. If there's something that's working, don't be afraid to give it a try, you know. Don't be so stubborn. I've done that so many times in tournaments where I was determined that this is what I was going to catch fish and got pounded by somebody who just had a little different technique that I knew about and should have tried. Yeah, I fell, I've fallen into that, uh, that same circle before. Well, you know, and the thing is people attend my seminars and stuff, you know. And they're always going, and they always want to run right out and do the last thing I tell them at a seminar, whether it's appropriate for the time or not. So be versatile. Ooh, uh, I thought I had a fish with my spoon. Here's a little tip for you. My spoon caught up. I'll show you what happened here. That's a good little tip for you. My spoon actually turned over and caught on the, on the uh, line like this. You can see that. And here, when you're, whether you're open water or ice fishing, if you take and just pound the bottom of your rod like this, That'll flip right off there and you won't have to reel up. You'll keep right on fishing without taking your lure out of the water. Let's get back and get some more fish. Okay. I love this part. I get my hands frozen. <laughs> yeah, you look a nice one. Here. Oh, man. You got a good one, Jake? Or? Still a nice fish, but nice Jake, fish. I want to show you something, Jake. You see right here? Uh -huh. This is the mouth. Yeah. This is the belly. Okay. It's the hook in the mouth, and then still, I mean, That's nice. I'll tell you, when you follow hook them, they feel like they're twice. Oh, but but like look how fat. Look, that belly's like mine. Yeah, <laughs> Those are nice fish. Well, I'm gonna go back and get a big one. I okay. thought you get me all excited like that. Right. <laughs> well, you know, these reservoirs in Wyoming and Montana can be such incredible walleye fishing in the winter time. I mean, we've caught just numbers of fish. Let me tell you exactly what we're doing and give you a few tips on how to do this. One of the first things is we had a group of uh, six guys come out right away this morning. We probably drilled 20 or 30 holes before we ever started fishing. We had an area that we had determined by looking at a topographical map that we thought would hold fish and also from experience in talking to people that fish the lake. So we came out and drilled a lot of holes in that area. And then a, a couple of the guys went off in an area a little further away and we started fishing. Well, the guys in the area that were down a little bit started getting fish right away, so we all moved and drilled a bunch of holes there. We probably caught a couple dozen walleyes within the first half hour of fishing, but only because we drilled those holes and kept searching until we caught fish. One of the keys is, if you're not catching fish, you've got to keep moving and looking for them. Then what we're doing is we're just fishing spoons. We're taking a couple different styles of jigging spoons, 
and we're just putting them down there. One of the keys is the presentation. We're not using any bait or anything, but we, the key is you've got to draw, draw, track the fish in and then trigger a strike. So what we do is we aggressively jig these up and let them flutter down, aggressively jig them up and let them flutter down. Then we may pause and do some gentle jigging and pause. The bites will almost always come while it's either falling or paused. One of the things you have to watch now, we're going to let this, we're in about 50 feet of water here. We've been catching these fish from 30 feet to 50 feet deep. When we let this down, that spoon is actually fluttering down like a dying bait fish while it's going down the hole. A lot of times some of the, the fish we catch come on the very first time we lift the rod. The fish actually grab it while it's falling down. So after we get down to bottom here, like I said, we're in about 50 feet. Another thing about spoons is they get down fairly quickly because they're heavy, so it doesn't take a long time to get them down. Now I'm on bottom. I take and I, I test right away to make sure I don't have a fish on there. Then I determine the bottom and I take the jig and I lift it up just a few inches off bottom. Now I want to aggressively lift it and let it go back down and aggressively lift it and let it go back down. Now this aggressive lift and drop is going to attract fish in from quite a distance, but the hit will come while it's falling or while it's paused, so then I have to kind of test it. After I do that a few times, I'll pause it and I'll do some short little jigging actions like this and pause. Maybe I'll shake it and pause and I'll just vary the action, but always with some long pauses to give the fish a chance to hit and with some good aggressive actions in between to attract them in from a distance. There we go. There we go. Another nice wallet. Well, I tell you what, guys, is this a blast or what? Who talked me into coming up here? I tell you what, Jake. Oh, this is a nicer one. Look at the belly on this one. Walleye fishing, Wyoming Reservoir. Get up and try it. He's something good on that rod, I'll tell you. Yeah. Another, that is a nice fat fish. It's a little nicer than that. There we go. I'll tell you what. Get up and enjoy this fishing. You just have a great time. Nice, big, fat walleyes, good fillets. And these are so good to eat. They are. You know, Jake, we've caught a lot of fish. Mm -hmm. It's been a really good We had a great group of guys, a wonderful time. I want to thank you for inviting me up. And thank you for coming up. You know, when this bite is on, I expect you to call me again. It's been a great time. I will. I really had fun. We've caught numbers of nice walleyes. It's just been fun. And you, we hope you people out there had fun joining us on Glendale Reservoir.